All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on, Is the Holy Spirit God? Now, people will argue and they'll say, well, you know, God is one. And uh, specifically, the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, well, you know, the Holy Spirit is like electricity. It's just God's active way of doing things. You know, like electricity is not a person. It's just, you know, the electricity comes in and turns on your lights and your heat and your air conditioning. But it's not really a person. People don't realize it, but the Jehovah's Witnesses... Um, if they came to my door and told me the sky was blue, I would look out the window just to make sure that they weren't lying. Now, not all of them are intentionally trying to mislead, but, you know, some of them are under great deception. I studied with them a little bit back in around, oh, I don't know, 72, 73. They said the world would end by 1976, and guess what? They were wrong. Yes. People don't know it, but in the... Uh, late 1800s, up until 1964, the Jehovah's Witnesses actually used the right Bible. They used the King James. And then people would read the King James and say, oh, wait a minute, you, you say this, but the King James says the opposite. So, you know, uh, what's up with that? And they got tired of explaining. So what they did was, is they created their own Bible. They threw away the King James and created their own Bible called the New World Order Translation. I'm sorry, the New World Translation. Or did I have it right the first time? The New World Order Translation. And, uh, you know, what can I tell you? But uh, I have thrown away everything that they've ever taught me. I mean, after all, they're false prophets. Christ did not return in 1976. So, all right. Now, the Bible does say that God is one, and I've covered that in other studies, so uh, I don't know. Maybe we could take a look. All right, in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10, have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers. Ephesians 4, 6. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Didn't know uh, Paul was a southerner, did you? You all? One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And yeah, I was born in a uh, southern state, believe it or not. But um, it borders the Midwest, so I don't know. James 2.19 says, Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. All right, so what they'll do is they'll quote Deuteronomy 6.4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay. All right, so there is one God, period. But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us, U.S., not United States, no, no, no. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, God is not talking to the angels here, okay? He says, let us make man in our image. All right, so man was made in God's image. But in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul writes the following. 
and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, one, and soul, two, and body, three, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, God who made man in his image has a spirit and soul and a body. Spirit, soul, and body. Does that mean you're three people? No. When somebody looks at me, all they can see is my body. They cannot see my spirit and they cannot see my soul. Well, I'm talking about a human. I mean, maybe an angel can see different things. I'm not, but I'm not talking about an angel. Okay, and your spirit is not your soul and your soul is not your body. In Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. You see, they can kill your body, but they can't kill your soul. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Huh. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're bought with a price. Christ's blood, his life, his physical fleshy body and his blood. That was a very high price. For ye are bought, bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And I've done a pretty lousy job of doing that, if I must say. So, spirit, soul, body. So, what can I tell you? Your body is not your soul, and your soul is not your spirit. Period. So, does that now make sense? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Are you starting to get it? Does God have a body, a soul, and a spirit? Well, let's take a look. What about the Holy Spirit? Let's take a look at that. Is the Holy Spirit just his active force, as the Jehovah's false witnesses teach? Or is the Holy Spirit actually have a thinking process and emotions? Can the Holy Spirit be lied to? Let's take a look. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, we read, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? So, you know, when, when you look at me, all you're going to see is my body. You don't know what I'm thinking. So, it says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, in John 5, 36, But I have greater witness than that of John. Now, this is Jesus speaking. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works than that I do, Bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Okay? In 1 John 4.10, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And propitiation has basically reference to being uh, a substitute. In Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which was not polluted like the modern uh, printers, I mean, you know, all, almost all the modern publishers 
are owned by the devil's children, almost all of them, to my knowledge. Propitiation, noun, the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person. All right, so, you know, like reconciling. And who was the, the favor, you know, reconciling the favor of an offended person? Who was the offended person? God. Why? Our sins. In theology, the atonement or atoning sacrifice offered to God to assuage his wrath and render him propitious, propitious to sinners. So in other words, we're offering, Christ offered his sacrifice to, for the, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, so that we don't have God's wrath upon us. So appeasing wrath reconciling us to God. That's what propitiation means. That's one of those uh, $20 theological words. All right, so let's go back, take a look at some things here. Um, now, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, reproves us, teaches us, guides us, and testifies of Jesus. In John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, ah, so when you read about the Comforter, you're talking about the Holy Ghost. The Bible, the King James Bible interprets the King James Bible, period. It does. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your, to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, when people tell you, oh, well, you know, the Bible was written hundreds of years after Jesus was on the earth, they're liars. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, whose name? Christ. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. See, the apostles had all things come back into their memory because of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. They wrote the words in the Bible. They remembered everything that God the Holy Ghost wanted them to remember. Remember that. John 15, 26, but when the Comforter is come, I remember the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you. Now, does a power plant say, oh, I'm going to send you electricity? No, no, they don't. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. If any of you go to a Pentecostal church and all the attention is on the Holy Spirit, oh, signs and wonders, you know, signs and wonders, and speaking in tongues, and miracles, and all these things, if, if the Spirit doesn't testify of Jesus Christ, it's the wrong Spirit. I mean, John 15, 26, But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. The Holy Spirit will testify of Jesus. Now, there was a guy named Ananias. You can read about him in Acts chapter 5. Him and his wife, if I remember her name was Sapphira, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but they sold a piece of property and were going to give some of the money to Peter and the apostles to help out 
the poor in the church. But they decided to keep back part of the price. But they were going to say that they're giving all the money to them. So let's take a look at that. Acts chapter 5. All right, Acts 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, here it is, they're making a donation. They sold something, but they kept back part of it, and they're giving it, you know, laid it at the apostles' feet to, to do with it as they find, you know, as they're being led. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie, to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Now, can you lie to the Holy Ghost? Can you lie to electricity? No. The Holy Ghost has to be an actual living entity because otherwise you couldn't lie. You can't lie to a electricity. You can't lie to a table or a chair or a car. I mean, you, you could, but, you know, it doesn't mean anything. But they said, Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie, not tell the truth, to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land. Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Now wait a minute. In verse 3, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie, to lie to the Holy Ghost? But in verse 4, it says, Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Why is that? Because the Holy Ghost is God. Did you catch that? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And an Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. In other words, he was dead. God killed him. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Wow. And the young men... Verse 6. And the young men arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Huh. How can you tempt electricity? No. How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. Wow. You see, lying to the Spirit, lying to the Holy Ghost is lying to God. Period. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now, there were in, that, uh, in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had, brought, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, 
Ah, the Holy Ghost is going to speak. The Holy Ghost is going to speak. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. You see, the Holy Ghost speaks. Does electricity speak? Can a car speak? Well, maybe if you uh, watch Knight Rider with Kit or something stupid like that, you know, or, or maybe when your seatbelt's unbuckled, your uh, modern car goes, seatbelt unbuckled. Buckle, seatbelt. Or you got a GPS that says, turn right here. But uh, sorry, it's not the same thing. So the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they were sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Can a car send you forth? Well, you have to, you have to work the controls. How about a chair or a table? Can that send you forth? No. Can electricity send you forth? No. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Wow. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. Behold the Lord God, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Be behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Huh. Who's the great shepherd? Christ. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom, he and shall gently lead those that are with young. Now, let me tell you something real quick. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. You know where the 40th book is? Matthew, the beginning of the New Testament. So Isaiah chapter 40 corresponds with the gospel of Matthew. Think about that. Behold, the Lord God will come a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. You know? And guess what? There's 66 books in the Bible, and Isaiah has 66 chapters. Coincidence? Eh, maybe. Maybe not. Verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Listen to this. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord? And the answer is nobody. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his, his counselor, hath taught him? See, the Spirit of the Lord is, here is being called his. Uh, the, um, there are some that claim to be of the tribe, and uh, they have a thing called the Shekinah, S-H-E, she, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, -E and they claim the spirit is female. And God the Father did the Holy Spirit, and they had a child, which they call Yeshua. Yeah. Did you know God has a wife? Uh, that's what they teach. But um, Isaiah says, Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being 
his counselor hath taught him. So is the spirit of is the queen of heaven? I don't think so. His counselor. So did you catch that? So the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him. With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, not her, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. Huh. All right, so I think, I hope you get the idea. All right, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who has raised up on high the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, now, here it is, the Spirit of the Lord spake, and it says, the God of Israel said. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. Now, how can electricity speak to you? Oh, yeah, you can plug a radio into the wall, into the wall socket and get electricity, and then, you know, but that's not the same. Okay? Electricity doesn't speak. The God of Israel said, verse 3, The God of Israel said, the rock, the rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. All right. All right, let's turn to the book of Judges, chapter 3. Uh, Judges is a very, very good example. Uh, God would bless the children of Israel. They would become fat and happy. They'd forget the Lord. Then the Lord would get angry at their wickedness and send the heathen to oppress them. And then the people would be persecuted, cry out to God, and God would deliver them. And then the cycle would happen again. Well, guess what? America and Europe got fat and happy and forgot the Lord. So, Judges chapter 3, verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. And people, witches, loved to go into the woods and the forests and the groves. And Balaam was just a name of a satanic god. Verse 8, Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of, ugh, C-H-U-S-H-A-N-R-I-S-H-A-T-H-A-I-M, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served, well, C-H-U-S-H, you know, eight years. And when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war, and the Lord delivered, uh, C-H-U-S-H, you know, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against, you know, that king. And the land had rest forty years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, 
died. All right, so should take a look. Uh, Judges, very interesting book. You ever heard of Samson? Judges. You ever heard of uh, Deborah? Sam, uh, J book of Judges. Yeah, Deborah, she was a prophetess and a ruler, a judge in Israel. I guess, uh, and, and this is not to take anything away from Deborah. Don't, don't take this wrong. But was there not a man whose heart was not as pure as Deborah? I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, she was a prophetess and the judge, the ruler. You know, like a judge. You know, you go in the courtroom, that's your ruler. So, the Spirit of God, you know, God made man in his image. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Christ came in a body. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And the soul must be the mind. That would be God the Father. You know, the thing is, my mind uses my eyes to look, and then my mind directs my feet where to walk. Are my feet not part? You know, my feet are not my mind. My mind's not my eyes. But all these parts create one person. They're all integrated. All right, we're getting ready to close this out. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, same nation, I mean, same word as nations, okay? Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Therefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Okay, so here it is, the Spirit gives things. So the Holy Spirit can be lied to, the Spirit speaks, the Spirit gives gifts. So, you know, when the Jehovah's Witnesses tell you that, oh, the, the Holy Spirit is just like electricity, electricity does, doesn't speak, it doesn't give gifts, it doesn't think, it doesn't sep tell, you know, speak and tell them to separate Paul and Barnabas and go their separate ways, and I'm going to tell you which way to go. Paul, I want you to go this way. Barnabas, go the other way. No. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. For to one is given by the same Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit dividing. Did you know the Spirit divides? 
dividing to every man severally as he will. The Spirit has a will, people. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in a body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, uh, more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and to our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church. First, apostles. Apostles are first people. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings. Helps. Governments. Diversities of tongues. Do you know tongues? Speaking in tongues? Do you notice that that's the last gift? It, it, you know, you think about it. It's the worst gift. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And what do the Pentecostals always, uh, they always brag about tongues. Oh, tongues this, tongues that. Well, I don't want the last gift. I'd rather have the gift of miracles or healings. I, you know, if I had the gift of healings, I'd be down at the children's hospital, healing all the kids with cancer. I mean, but that's just me. Uh, of course, the, uh, the doctors of the tribe would probably want to kill me because I would put them out of business. Verse 29, are all apostles? The answer is no. Are all prophets? The answer is no. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? And the answer is no. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. What's the best gifts? Anything before tongues. Think about it. I mean, you know, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, Gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And let me tell you something, people. Helps, you know, there's I've met people in churches. That's that's all they did. They helped people. Uh, there's been people I knew. Uh, they would always give out money to help other people that were in need. And you know what? They never lacked for anything. No matter how much they gave away, it's like God always gave them things. 
You know, it's like they gave away all their stuff, all their money, and then their car blows up, and then some they somebody gives them a car. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's never failed. I mean, it, really, I've known people like this. But uh, tongues. The Bible says covet er, covet earnestly. That means covet means to desire intensely. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. All right, people. Um, the Holy Spirit is God. All right? I mean, let us make man in our image. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. A spirit. God ha must have a soul, a spirit, and when Christ came in the flesh, a body, I, that's how I kind of, that's kind of how I look at it. I'm not saying I understand it perfectly because, boy, I don't. How can my little stupid human mind comprehend God who created all things? I, you know, it's just, it's mind boggling. I mean, I probably lo know less than 1%, if that. So, but the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit can be lied to. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. I mean, come on. Those are attributes. Do you know you can grieve the Holy Spirit? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30. Here's the punchline. And grieve not, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, did you know you can grieve the Holy Spirit? Do you know the Holy Spirit has emotions? You can grieve. That's where the word grief comes from. Oh, that kid of mine, he, he was getting in trouble with the law and going to jail and getting arrested, and, and he's caused me nothing but grief. That's a figure of speech. But that's where the word grief comes from. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. That's an emotion, people. Electricity doesn't have emotions. Sorry. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. People, the Holy Spirit is God. Period. Okay? I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, please listen to this again. And do your own research. I'm not the uh, end of all things. I mean, I'm just, I'm just some guy that turned off the TV and spent time listening and reading and studying the Word of God. I mean, I'm nobody special. Trust me, I'm not anybody special. Matter of fact, if some of you knew my life, you'd say, wow, that guy's a hypocrite. And yeah, I am. I'm a hypocrite. You know, I hope I'm not as big a hypocrite as the Pharisees were. In Matthew 5.20, Jesus said, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And if you don't know who the Pharisees were, they were part of the tribe, okay? That except your righteousness shall, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you better make sure your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in Jesus' precious name, I pray, amen.